Hello everybody, and we're going to try something new today in this episode of Maths for Fun. I am going to try to do a speed run through uh, probably the first 10 problems in the AMC 12, uh, AMC 12A from 2019. So this is to give you an idea of what the problems are like that are actually on the math competitions that you'll be doing in high school, and uh, hopefully give you some insight into how to solve them. So let's get started. So this is, as I said, uh, AMC 12. Uh, there are 25 problems, and roughly speaking, these are in groups of five. The first five are supposed to be easy. The last five are supposed to be very hard. And so you'll find that it will take you a lot. It's a time test, 75 minutes limit. So it'll take you a lot less time to get through the first few problems than it will take you at the end. Um, all of these problems are a little bit challenging. I mean, none of them are none of them are trivial. Uh, but let's uh, let's get started and see how we do. Okay, the area of a pizza with radius four is n percent larger than the area of a pizza with radius three. Okay, so we've got a one equals pi r squared is equal to sixteen pi. A two is equal to nine pi, and where we want to find the percent larger that the larger pizza is. So we're looking for the, the extra between A1 and A2. So that's 7 pi over 9 pi. Um, we've got 7 ninths of a pizza times 100 over 1 is equal to um, well, 100 divided by 9 is 11.111 multiplied by 7. It's 77. 0.7 dot, which gives us answer E, 78. So scrolling to the next problem, problem two, A is 150% of B, what percent of A is 3B? So A is equal to 1.5 times B, uh, 3B is going to be equal to uh, 2 times 1.5 b is equal to um, 2a. What percent of a is 3b? So, so 3b is equal to 200% of a. And we're done there. Problem three. A box contains 28 red balls, 20 green balls, 19 yellow balls, 13 blue balls, 11 white balls, and 9 black balls. What is the minimum number of balls that must be drawn from the box without replacement? So that means we don't put the balls back in after we check. Uh, to guarantee that at least 15 balls of a single color will be drawn. Well, the other way we can think of this problem is what's the maximum number of balls that we can draw without at least 15 balls of a single color being drawn? And then add one. So that would mean we draw 14 red balls, 14 green balls, 14 yellow balls, 13 blue balls, 11 white balls, and nine black balls. Uh, adding those up, we get three times 14 is um, 42, another 20 here, 62, 72, 75. That's 75, add one, and we're guaranteed to have 15, 76. And there is our answer. And we're good. Problem four, what is the greatest number of consecutive integers whose sum is 45? Okay, well, let's think about this. How do you get consecutive integers adding to a number? Well, you can have 45, you can have, um, Let's see what the factorization of 45 is. It's 3 times 3 times 5. OK, so we can write it as three numbers, um, which will be 15 in the middle, 14 and 16. That adds to 45. We can add it, write it as five numbers, which is 9 in the middle, 10, 11, and in fact, we can add, we can write it as any odd factor of 45. So we can write 45 as uh, one number, clearly, uh, 3, 5, 9, 
15 or 45 uh, consecutive numbers, right? So the, for, for, for 45, what we're doing is the middle number is going to be 1. And then we're going to have 0, minus 1, minus 2, and 2, 3. And so this is the middle number. We're going to have 22 numbers this way. So 1 plus 22 is 23. We'll go all the way up to 23. And we'll have um, 22 numbers this way. So 21. Um, so that's going to go down to dot, dot, dot. And it's going to go down to minus 21. And what we get is minus 21 cancels with 21 here, minus 22 cancels with 22, uh, sorry, minus 20 cancels with 20. And we're left with all, all of this stuff here. Adds up to zero and we get 22 plus 23. That's interesting. We've got 45 numbers here and we've got two numbers left that cancel off. And that gives us another solution, right? Um, so we can, we can have in even numbers, of additions, we can have uh, 22 plus 23. Uh, we can have, let me see. Well, for any of these solutions, right? But let's take a look at this one, 14, 15, 16. Well, what we can add, do is we can add on 13, 12, 11, all the way down to minus 11, minus 12, minus 13. And now we've got a solution that has 3 plus 27. That's got 30 terms. So it turns out we can have, for every addition of consecutive numbers with an odd number of digits in it, we can find an, an, another one with an even number of digits in it, uh, which is also a factor of 2 times 45, unless I'm mistaken. Uh, 2 times 45 is 90. And so what's the longest series going to be? Well, taking our, our uh, tip from this, if the, sh if the shortest series with an odd number is 1, and the longest series is going to be, let's erase this, and I think our longest series is going to be 45 at the end. And it's going to go from 44 all the way to minus 44. Everything in there is going to add to zero. And then we've got 45 left. That's how many consecutive digits, consecutive integers. So that's 90. And again, that's a factor of 2 times 45. Uh, so I think we can confidently answer that 90 is the longest because we have to have 45 in there. And uh, that's the longest string of numbers that can add to zero that doesn't include 45. Okay. Let's have a go at number five. Let's have a go at problem five. So we have two lines with slopes one half and two intersecting at two, two and the area of the triangle enclosed by these two lines and the line x plus y equals 10 is what we're looking for. Okay, well, let's draw our diagram. It's all going to happen in Q1 in the first quadrant. Let's draw that x plus y equals 10 line. So this one is x equals 0, y equals 10. This point is x equals 10, y equals 0. The point 2, 2 is going to be around here somewhere. And let's see, we're going to have one line. So it's rise over run, so rise of 1, run of 2. So this slope has m equals 1 half, and it intersects at x equals 0, y equals 1. This slope has m equals 2, intersects at One zero. So let's see what we can do here. Well, we can try and look at this. Right, this what we're looking for is this area here. 
But what we can do is we can take the area of this bigger triangle, take this height and this height. They have the same base. Uh, so we can take the area of this, this smaller triangle down at the bottom here from the bigger triangle and we get the area of the shape of piece. Okay. So we have this line that goes through 2, 2 and its slope is a half. So we've got y is equal to 1 half x plus. So y is equal to 2, x is equal to 2. We need the constant to be 1. Or 2y is equal to x plus 2. So this intersection point for x plus y equals 10. Uh, let's put x equal to 10 minus y in here. And we get 3y is equal to 10 plus 2, 12. So y is equal to 4, and x is then going to be equal to 6. And since everything is symmetrical around this 45 degree angle, we don't even need to calculate this. We can already tell that this is going to be 4, 6. Okay, so our height here is 4, our height here is 2, and our base is from 2, 2 to 8, 2. So our base length here is, because this line, I'll remind you, is y equals to 2. Base here is 6. So we have everything we need to calculate our area. Um, our area is going to be 1 half this base of 6 times this height of 4 minus 1 half the same base times the height of 2. So Now we can extract the 1 half of 6. 1 half of 6 times 2 is equal to 6. And our answer is C. Moving on. Problem 6. The figure below shows the line L with a regular, infinite, recurring pattern of squares and line segments. How many of the following four kinds of rigid motion transformations of the plane in which this figure is drawn other than the identity transformation will transform the figure to itself. So we're given four options. A rotation around the point of line, around a point of line L, some translation in the direction parallel to the line L, the reflection across the line L, and some reflection across the line per perpendicular to L. So a rotation translation parallel, a reflection, and a reflection um, through a line parallel perpendicular to L. Okay, well, we don't need all this repetition, but we're going to we're going to break down this shape to see what we get. Right. So this is obviously regularly spaced. And I think this is probably enough for us to go on. So the first thing to notice is that clearly we can do a translation. Right. If we move it that way or that way, we get to the same shape. So this one definitely works. And another thing to notice is if we rotate this shape through 180 degrees, we do get this shape going in the other direction, right? The pointer at the top here is going to end up pointing to the southwest. Uh, so clearly, if we take a point somewhere around here and we rotate everything 180 degrees, this point is going to go to here, this point is going to go to here. So we're good. That rotation definitely works. Uh, so then the reflection across the line L. Well, let's see what happens when we reflect across the line L. We end up with the line L, and then the squares that are on the bottom end up on the top, but the pointer is going in the wrong direction. And the squares that are on the top are on the bottom, but again, the pointer is going in the wrong direction. 
And I don't think there's any way that we can fix that unless we combine with something else like a flip. So this one does not provide a reflection. And similarly, the reflection through a line perpendicular has the same problem, right? The, the, any pointer that's going to the top right, once it flips, it's going to be going to the top left. So this one is also, the combination of these would actually work, but the, the reflection across the line perpendicular to uh, the line L itself does not work. So our answer is that two of these um, operations work, but the other two do not. Okay, problem seven. Melanie computes the mean mu, the median m, and the modes of the 365 values that are the dates in the month of 2019. I like this type of problem. Thus her data con consists of 12 ones, 12 twos, 12 28s, 11 29s, 11 30s, and 7 31s. Let D be the median of the modes. Okay, so the modes are the numbers that have the most, right? So we have 12 ones, twos, threes, fours, all the way up to 28s. So what's the median of that going to be? We're discarding the 29s, 30s, and 31s. So mm -hmm. D is going to be, well, it's going to be between 14 and 15, right? It's 14.5. Because there's just as many values below that as there are above it. Uh, the mean is clearly going to be bigger than that because we're including 29s, 30s, and 31s in the calculation. And the median of the whole group, so what we have to figure out is, is the median going to be between D and mu, or is it going to be bigger than the mean? So let's see what the median is. Uh, the median is we've got 365 values. So we're going to be taking the 180, we're taking the average of the 182nd and 183rd value. Okay, so 180 is equal to 12 times 15. So we've gotten rid of all of the 15. So the 182nd and 183rd are both 16. So the median is 16. And our mean, well, we got to figure if it's going to be bigger or smaller than 16. And since we've got more small numbers and fewer bigger numbers, it's clearly going to be in the middle. So my answer is E. Sometimes you want to answer these questions quickly, even if you don't get the exact answer. Like you can always go back and calculate the mean but it's a little bit trickier to calculate. And once we've logically said, okay, it's gotta be bigger than D and it's gotta be smaller than M because it's not going to be equal to 16. Um, we mark an answer and we move on. That's typically the best strategy for contest math. Problem eight. For a set of four distinct lines on a plane, there are exactly N distinct points that lie on two or more of the lines. What is the sum of all of the possible values of n? Okay. Well, how many different ways can we draw four distinct lines on a plane? All four going through the same point is one. Uh, we can do clearly kind of a grid. So parallel lines. So the trick here is going to be to figure out all of the configurations of four lines. Um, the simplest configuration is where each line intersects with each other line exactly once. Uh, so that will be one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, we can have two parallel lines and then two non-parallel lines, one, two, three, four, five. We can have a grid. 
which gives us exactly four intersection points. We can have three lines going through the same point, and then another line off. So this is one, two, three, four again. <coughs> So we've already counted four. Um, we can't get any more than six, that's for sure. So we can definitely get six, five, and four. Uh, is there any way that we can get three points exactly um, that lie on two or more lines? Well, yes, there is. Like so. So we can get three. Now, is there a way for us to get exactly two points that lie on two or more lines? And I don't think there is because of this. We can get two points with three lines. But now what do, what do we do with our fourth line, right? Either we're going to cross this line, we're going to be perpendicular, which is a copy of this example, uh, or it's going to be oblique, in which case it's going to be a copy of this example. Or we're parallel to that line, in which case we're back to this example. So we can't do two. Two is not possible. So three is possible, four is possible, five is possible, six is possible, and one is possible. And that's it. Um, and zero, but adding zero with four parallel lines doesn't change anything. So uh, four plus six is ten. Uh, five plus one is six plus three is nine. So we get 19. We could have done the sum to six is six times seven over two minus two, but we, 19 is just fine. Okay. Okay, so we're getting to the tricky ones now. Problem nine, a sequence of numbers is defined recursively as a1 is equal to one, a2 is equal to three sevenths, and then a n is equal to a n minus two times a n minus one over two a n minus two minus a n minus one for all n greater than three. Then a 2019 can be written as p over q, where p and q are relatively prime positive integers. So the general strategy with this type of problem is you start to solve it by looking at the next one and looking at the one after that, the next term in the sequence and the one after that. You see if you can spot a pattern. Um, so a3 is equal to a n minus 2 is 1 times 3 sevenths over 2 minus 3 sevenths is equal to, so 2 times 7 is 14 minus 3 is 11, so we get 3 over 11. a4 is equal to 3 sevenths times 3 elevenths over 6 over 7 minus 3 over 11 um, is equal to 3 times 3 over 7 times 11. And at this point, we start to look for any way that we can find a recursive relation. And see, we can cancel out the 7 times 11. So we end up with 9 over 66 minus 21. So 66 minus 21 is 45 is equal to 1 fifth. Uh, okay, so, so far we've got one, three sevenths, three elevenths, one fifth. Let's go for another couple of terms and see if we spot a pattern. So we're up to a5 is equal to three elevenths times one fifth over two times three elevenths minus one fifth. 
is equal to 3 over 2 times 3 times 5 is 30 minus is equal to 3 over 19. And I think I'm spotting our, our pattern. I'm going to guess that our next one is 3 over 23. And this is also, remember, 3 over 15. And this is 3 over 3. So at this point, we've got our pattern. Uh, we're going to guess. We're going to check one more value. If it matches the pattern, then we're going to figure out what A2019 will be and move on. Um, if we were doing this uh, as part of a, a, a written exam, we would want to prove that the formula for AN is equal to 3 over whatever it ends up being. So we have our guess. We're going to guess that the next uh, term is 3 over 23. But let's calculate it and see. A6 is equal to... So AN minus 2 is 1 fifth times AN minus 1 is 3 nineteenths over 2 fifths minus 3 nineteenths. And we end up with 3 over... 2 times 19, 38, minus 3 times 5. Uh, 3 over 38 minus 15, 23. And we've got our formula. So what's, what is the symbolic form of that formula? Right. So A1 is 3 over 3. A2 is 3 over 7. A3 is 3 over 11. So AN is equal to 3 over 4N minus 1. When N is 1, that's 3. When N is 2, and it goes up by 4 each time. Okay, so A2019 is equal to 3 over... 4 times 2019 is 8076 minus 1, 8075. Now, can we reduce this? Is this divisible by 3? Well, let's add up the digits and see. 8 plus 7 is 15, plus 5 is 20. It is not divisible by 3, and so we have our answer. It was 8078. Okay, last problem for today. Problem 10. The figure below shows 13 circles of radius 1 within a larger circle. All the intersections occur at points of tangency. What is the area of the region shaded in the figure inside the larger circle but outside of all the circles of radius 1? Okay, so our goal here, our problem is going to be to find the radius of this circle. Because if we find the radius of the circle, we can calculate the area of the big circle, subtract 13 times the area of the small circles, and we're done. So how are we going to find the radius of the circle? Well, we know that the radius of the circle is 1, so that's 2. We know that that's 1. And by the characteristics of circles, we know that when you join the centers of circles, the lines th th that join the centers go through the points of tangency. And they go through them at a right angle. So we know... Well, we can certainly guess that this here is 1. So this piece here is 2. This piece here is 2, and this piece here is 1. So we've got 1, and then this, and then 1 here. And so what we need to do is figure out this distance here. Now there's another thing that we know, and that is that 
when circles interlock, they interlock at 60 degree angles, right? 2, 2, 2. This is an equilateral triangle in here. So we know that this angle here is 120 degrees. And this angle here is going to be 30 degrees. <coughs> so we've got ooh, something that we always like to see. 30, 60, 90 triangles with a radius of 1, uh, a hypotenuse of 2, so a short side of 1, a hypotenuse of 2, and this piece here is going to be root 3 from here to here. So adding that all together, we've got our big R is equal to 1 plus 2 root 3. So this piece here is 1. Uh, let me use a different color here so that we've got this piece here is 1. This piece here, uh, let me go for red here. This piece here is root 3. And let's go for an orange for the last piece. And this piece here is by reflection also root 3. And that's the radius of the big circle. So our big radius is 1 plus 2 root 3. So pi r squared switching back to the purple here. is equal to pi times 1 plus 2 root 3 squared is equal to pi times 1 plus 4 times 3 is 12 plus 4 root 3. And then going back to our question, what are we looking for? We're looking for the area of the region shaded. So that's the big area and we're looking to subtract. So area shaded is equal to pi r squared minus 13 pi times 1 squared, uh, which is equal to pi times 13 plus 4 root 3 minus 13 pi. So when we plug everything in, pi r squared for our big circle is uh, pi times 13 plus 4 root 3. Uh, the area, the total area of the 13 small circles is 13 pi. Uh, and subtracting that from the area of the large circle, we end up with 4 root 3 pi or 4 pi root 3, which is answer, which is answer A. And we're done. Okay, next time we're going to do the next probably five problems because these are, these are quite long. And I don't want to make these videos too uh, boring here, but uh, the idea is to kind of give you a, a general feel for how you attack these problems, um, some of the types of math that you'll come across when you come across these problems. And we'll, um, we'll take it further next time. Until then, happy mathing.